my Lord and my God. I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Today's Gospel is a very important moment in the foundation of the Church, where we, where we see you, Lord Jesus, as you summon your twelve disciples, as Saint Matthew tells us, and gave them authority over unclean spirits with power to cast them out and to cure all kinds of diseases and sickness. In today's Gospel we contemplate the call, the vocation of the Twelve, of the twelve Apostles. First Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James the son of Zebedee and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the zealot and Judas Iscariot, the one who was to betray them. So this call and how important it is that we hear the name of each individual apostle because vocation is always personal just as your vocation and mind is personal, inalienable, sacred, unrepeatable, just yours, just mine. Our Lord calls, each, calls us not as a crowd, but as individuals, our personal vocation. And what's striking is how immediately we're told by St. Matthew, these 12 Jesus sent out so being called by Jesus means being sent out with you, Lord, to be told to come to you is also to be told to go out from you or to go with you out, outwards. Vocation always means mission. Communion with you, Jesus, always means evangelization, apostolate, love of others. Love of God always means love of others. This is always the way of Jesus. To be with you, Lord, means to be with your people. Or as Pope Francis says, passion for Jesus means passion for God's people. It's as if, Lord, you, you call us individually by our vocation, whatever that might be. But we share the Christian vocation as apostles of the Lord, all of us. You call us into your heart to be one with you to be intimates of yours, close friends of yours, very close friends of yours. And when we accept that invitation and go into your heart, what do we find in your heart? But all the people, all your people, all your beloved people, all souls. So communion with Christ is always communion with others. That's actually a description of what the church is. Communion with Christ, with God and communion with one another. Lord, help me to be a good apostle. Give me the grace to be an effective witness to you in my ordinary life, in my ordinary daily circumstances, whatever they may be. And thank God we all have probably different and varied and wonderfully different circumstances. But each one of us can be, notwithstanding our weaknesses and our failures and all the rest of it, we can be like a lighted lamp. We can be like the presence of Jesus, even if it's through our weaknesses. What's key in order to be an apostle is to be close to Jesus, to love our Lord, to let him love us. And then when we're in his heart, we find there the whole people of God, the whole human race, all those for whom Jesus gives his life. The Lord doesn't live in splendid isolation. You know, God could. 
being all self-sufficient and omnipotent and all-knowing. He doesn't need us at all. He doesn't need to come out to us at all. But the reality is that our God is a God who goes out of himself, out of pure and adulterated love. The Trinity goes out of itself by sending the Son in the Incarnation, by sending the Holy Spirit at Pentecost and by continually sending the Holy Spirit now. God goes out of himself. When we spend a bit of time, whenever we can, in front of the Eucharist, in front of the Blessed Sacrament, we are adoring the Lord who has come out of himself into the sacraments. When we follow up on a good inspiration, on a good thought, we're, we're meeting the Lord who has come out of himself and is giving us a bit of light or a bit of grace or a bit of encouragement. Jesus is the one who is sent. And you and I, who live in, through and with Jesus through baptism, we're also sent. And that's the key to being good apostles. It's not necessarily that we have to be very articulate or very intelligent or very erudite are very efficient, and it's good to, I suppose, develop all the talents we possibly can, that goes without saying. But what is essential to being a good apostle is to be a friend of the Lord. It, today's Gospel passage, which is from Matthew, has a parallel passage in St. Mark, where we're told that the Lord spent the whole night in prayer, and the following day he called those whom he wished to be with him. And we're told these he called to be with him and to be sent out to preach. It's the same dynamic, to be with Jesus and to be sent out to preach. With you, Lord, come also means go. Coming to Christ means going, going out to his people. But we don't go out alone. The work of evangelization, bearing witness to Christ, is always fundamentally the Lord's work. And that's why Prayer, communion with Christ, union with you, Lord, is really the only thing necessary. It's the one thing necessary. These, uh, these weeks and these months, the Holy Father is giving his weekly catechesis on precisely on apostolic zeal. And he's doing it in a very attractive way by placing before us different examples of great apostles, of great evangelizers such as St. Francis Xavier or um, St. Mary MacKillop from Australia. Recently he spoke about St. Mary MacKillop and all her work of apostolate. Um, among other saints, among other great figures of the church, he's, he's, he's presenting us with models, very attractive personalities. And, and what's the common thread among all these different models of apostolic zeal? Because they're all very different in their the period of history they lived in and in their spiritualities and in their just their their personalities and all the rest. They're very different. But what unites them all, what unites them all is this communion with our Lord. I remember once somebody saying, a good Catholic, they said, well, I like Mary very much. I like Our Lady very much. I have devotion to her. But somehow she seems somewhat distant from me because she's all pure. She's all holy. She's the Immaculate Conception. And I'm, I'm a sinner. That's how they put it, you know. The fact that they were sinners themselves made them feel that somehow the mother of God, our mother, was distant from them. A bit like an ice princess. And when they said that, this person said it with the best will in the world, I, I could understand where they were coming from, but I knew it wasn't correct. It wasn't right. Our Lady's Holiness doesn't distance her from us in any way. And then I came across some words of Pope Benedict in a homily he gave about Our Lady, where he simply says, he says it simply and also profoundly, the closer a person is to God, the closer that person is to people. The fact that Our Lady is so close to God is the reason why she is so close to human beings. In fact, there's no greater apostle than Our Lady. There's no greater evangelizer than Our Lady. And the reason is because there is nobody closer to our Lord than Our Lady. This is a beautiful thing we all experience in, in Our Lady's care for us. But it's also a lesson for our own apostolic life, our own call to be evangelizers. With you, Lord Jesus, come always means go. 
I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations you have communicated to me in this time of prayer. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.